You're listening to The Cultured Bumpkin, a literature podcast with Jake Phillips, where we present audiobook quality readings of the classics for your enjoyment. Thank you for stopping by. And remember, just because you're a bumpkin doesn't mean you can't be cultured. Hey, hey, today we have a very hilarious comedy piece from the outstanding Shirley Jackson. Now, this is something we can all relate to, kind of a bratty kid, a story of a, you know, there's a bratty kid involved, but the ending is kind of a surprise ending. You didn't really see it coming. It's it's just funny. Just a few minutes long, and um, this is good. I really enjoyed this one, and I hope you do too. Charles by Shirley Jackson. The day my son Laurie started kindergarten, he renounced corduroy overalls with bibs and began wearing blue jeans with a belt. I watched him go off the first morning with the older girl next door, seeing clearly that an era of my life was ended. My sweet-voiced nursery school tot replaced by a long-trousered, swaggering character who forgot to stop at the corner and wave goodbye to me. He came home the same way, the front door slamming open, his cap on the floor, and the voice suddenly became raucous, shouting, Isn't anybody here? At lunch, he spoke insolently to his father, spilled his baby sister's milk, and remarked that his teacher said we were not to take the name of the Lord in vain. How was school today? I asked, elaborately casual. All right, he said. Did you learn anything? his father asked. Lori regarded his father coldly. I didn't learn nothing, he said. Anything, I said. Didn't learn anything. The teacher spanked a boy, though, Lori said, addressing his bread and butter. For being fresh, he added with his mouth full. What did he do? I asked. Who was it? Lori thought. It was Charles, he said. He was fresh. The teacher spanked him and made him stand in a corner. He was awfully fresh. What did he do? I asked again. But Laurie slid off his chair, took a cookie, and left, while his father was still saying, See here, young man. The next day, Laurie remarked at lunch as soon as he sat down, Well, Charles was bad again today. He grinned enormously and said, Today Charles hit the teacher. Good heavens, I said, mindful of the Lord's name. I suppose he got spanked again? He sure did, Laurie said. Look up, he said to his father. What? his father said, looking down. Look down, Laurie said. Look at my thumb. Gee, you're dumb. He began to laugh insanely. Why did Charles hit the teacher? I asked quickly. Because she tried to make him color with red crayons, Lori said. Charles wanted to color with green crayons, so he hit the teacher and she spanked him and said nobody play with Charles, but everybody did. The third day, it was Wednesday of the first week, Charles bounced a seesaw onto the head of a little girl and made her bleed, and the teacher made him stay inside all during recess. Thursday, Charles had to stand in a corner during story time because he kept pounding his feet on the floor. Friday, Charles was deprived of blackboard privileges because he threw the chalk. On Saturday, I remarked to my husband, Do you think kindergarten is too unsettling for Lori? All this... Toughness and bad grammar, and this Charles boy sounds like such a bad influence. It'll be all right, my husband said reassuringly. Bound to be people like Charles in the world. Might as well meet them now as later. On Monday, Laurie came home late, full of news. Charles, he shouted as he came up the hill. I was waiting anxiously on the front steps. Charles! Lori yelled all the way up the hill. Charles was bad again today. Come right in, I said as soon as he came close enough. Lunch is waiting. You know what Charles did? He demanded, following me through the door. 
Charles yelled, so in school they sent a boy in from first grade to tell the teacher she had to make Charles keep quiet, and so Charles had to stay after school, and so all the children stayed to watch him. What did he do? I asked. He just sat there, Lori said, climbing into the chair at the table. Hi, Pop, old dust mop. Charles had to stay after school today, I told my husband. Everybody stayed with him. What does Charles look like? My husband asked Lori. What's his other name? He's bigger than me, Lori said. And he doesn't have any rubbers, and he doesn't ever wear a jacket. Monday night was the first parent-teacher's meeting, and only the fact that the baby had a cold kept me from going. I wanted passionately to meet Charles's mother. On Tuesday, Lori remarked suddenly, Our teacher had a friend come to see her in school today. Charles's mother? My husband and I asked simultaneously. Nah, Lori said scornfully. It was a man who came and made us do exercises. We had to touch our toes. Look. He climbed down from his chair and squatted down and touched his toes. Like this, he said. He got solemnly back into his chair and said, picking up his fork, Charles didn't even do exercises. That's fine, I said heartily. Didn't Charles want to do exercises? Nah, Lori said. Charles was so fresh to the teacher's friend, he wasn't let do exercises. Fresh again, I said. He kicked the teacher's friend, Lori said. The teacher's friend told Charles to touch his toes just like I did, and Charles kicked him. What are they going to do about Charles, do you suppose? Lori's father asked him. Lori shrugged elaborately. Throw him out of school, I guess, he said. Wednesday and Thursday were routine. Charles yelled during story hour and hit a boy in the stomach and made him cry. On Friday, Charles stayed after school again, and so did all the other children. With the third week of kindergarten, Charles was an institution in our family. The baby was being a Charles when she cried all afternoon. Lori did a Charles when he filled his wagon full of mud and pulled it through the kitchen. Even my husband, when he caught his elbow in the telephone cord and pulled telephone, ashtray, and bowl of flowers off the table, said after the first minute, Looks like Charles. During the third and fourth weeks, it looked like a reformation in Charles. Lori reported grimly at lunch on Thursday of the third week, Charles was so good today, the teacher gave him an apple. What? I said, and my husband added warily, You mean Charles? Charles, Lori said. He gave the crayons around and picked up the books afterwards, and the teacher said he was her helper. What happened? I asked incredulously. He was her helper, that's all, Lori said and shrugged. Can this be true about Charles? I asked my husband that night. Can something like this happen? Mm, wait and see, my husband said cynically. When you've got a Charles to deal with, this may mean he's only plotting. He seemed to be wrong. For over a week, Charles was the teacher's helper. Each day he handed things out, and he picked things up. No one had to stay after school. The PTA meeting's next week again, I told my husband one evening. I'm going to find Charles's mother there. Ask her what happened to Charles, my husband said. I'd like to know. I'd like to know myself, I said. On Friday of that week, things were back to normal. You know what Charles did today? Lori demanded at the lunch table in a voice slightly awed. He told a little girl to say a word, and she said it, and the teacher washed her mouth out with soap, and Charlie laughed. What word? His father asked unwisely, and Lori said, I'll have to whisper it to you. It's so bad. He got down off his chair and went around to his father. His father bent his head down, and Lori whispered joyfully. His father's eyes widened. Did Charles tell the little girl to say that? He asked respectfully. She said it twice, Lori said. Charles told her to say it twice. What happened to Charles? My husband asked. Nothing, Lori said. He was passing out crayons. 
Monday morning, Charles abandoned the little girl and said the evil word himself three or four times, getting his mouth washed out with soap each time. He also threw chalk. My husband came to the door with me that evening as I set out for the PTA meeting. Invite her over for a cup of tea after the meeting, he said. I want to get a look at her. If only she's there, I said prayerfully. She'll be there, my husband said. I don't see how they could hold a PTA meeting without Charles's mother. At the meeting, I sat restlessly, scanning each comfortable matronly face trying to determine which one hid the secret of Charles. None of them looked to me haggard enough. No one stood up in the meeting and apologized for the way her son had been acting. No one mentioned Charles. After the meeting, I identified and sought out Lori's kindergarten teacher. She had a plate with a cup of tea and a piece of chocolate cake. I had a plate with a cup of tea and a piece of marshmallow cake. We maneuvered up to one another cautiously and smiled. I've been so anxious to meet you, I said. I'm Lori's mother. We are so interested in Lori, she said. Well, he certainly likes kindergarten, I said. He talks about it all the time. We had a little trouble adjusting the first week or so, she said primly. But now he's been a fine little helper, with occasional lapses, of course. Lori usually adjusts very quickly, I said. I suppose this time it's Charles's influence. Charles? Yes, I said, laughing. You must have your hands full in that kindergarten with Charles. Charles? she said. We don't have any Charles in the kindergarten. <laughs> I love that story. That was so funny. Like, it was a great journey, and then it had a punchline. It was almost like a long joke. It was phenomenal. I loved that. I hope you did, too. And we'll talk to you next time. You've been listening to The Cultured Bumpkin, a literature podcast with Jake Phillips. Thank you very much for listening. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this, would you mind going and subscribing and leaving a nice review on whatever podcast platform pl 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 <laughs> podcast platform you heard this on? I would really appreciate it. Thank you very much for listening and we'll see you next time.